Pimp, Tally Ho, and Baste My Steaming Turkeys. Jules Guides here, which I wander around London and tell you fascinating facts, which you may not find that fascinating. But um, we here in Britain are very proud of our legal system. God knows why, but we are. Uh, we feel that we gave the world Magna Carta and all this stuff. So I thought because uh, there's so many beautiful places around here connected with the legal profession, let's have a video devoted to that. I happen to be in uh, Fleet Street as well from last week. But uh, now behind me is the Royal Courts of Justice. It's actually a neo-Gothic building. It was built by a bloke who had won a competition. In the old days, they used to hold these competitions for architects, um, see whoever has the best design, they, they took theirs. And uh, this guy called George Edmund Street, I think he, uh, he, d he designed this beautiful building. And you can actually go and watch a trial. I mean, I can't go and film in there because they've got all those airport type security things. They won't let you film, but it is very beautiful. And you can, can walk through and take a look at it and it's based on the Great Hall at Westminster except he thought like I've got such a perfect building my building is beautifully perfect except he decided that it, it can't be hundred percent perfect because only God has the right to create buildings which are hundred percent perfect so he deliberately left one column too short so if you go through there there's what on the inside there is one column which is unfinished it doesn't quite reach the top According to a book that I read, uh, the clock up there is the only one of its type because it was an Irish clock seller. Apparently he didn't know how to read or write, but he was brilliant at making clocks. And it was the most accurate clock in London at the time. And uh, when they needed another one built, he said, oh, sorry, I've thrown away the drawings. I think he died or something and they couldn't rebuild one because he didn't write any of it down. See those characters there at the top, they're uh, Alfred the Great and King Solomon. Solomon the Wise, he was called, wasn't he? He was, he was considered to be extremely wise. Anyway, it doesn't sound very wise to me. He had the fabulous idea of trying to settle a dispute between two women who both claimed a baby belonged to them by uh, offering to cut the baby in half. I'm not quite sure what he would have done if they'd both said, yeah, yeah, go right ahead, no problem. See, I don't even need to walk around. There's so many things around here. This is Twining's. It's like in 1709, I think, that Thomas Twining opened up a shop here. And that sign above the shop there is actually the oldest company logo still in its original position in the world. How do you like them apples? I've mentioned this in one of my other videos. They've got something called a tip jar, which they claim is to ensure promptness. But I would have spelt ensure with an E there to ensure promptness. But maybe Dr. Johnson hadn't written his dictionary yet. Perhaps that's what it was, so they spelt ensure with an I. Feel free to correct me if I make any mistakes. This lady has just asked me what I'm doing, and it's a, a handy reminder on pain of death to subscribe to the Jules Guides YouTube channel. Right. Don't be afraid to subscribe. Subscribe isn't a dirty word. Okay. No. Um, so, uh, yes, and that goes for you too. It's free, it doesn't cost anything. I'm not going to email you loads or anything like that. But if you do want to be notified about uh, every time I upload a video, then you can hit the little bell and that will notify you. But uh, otherwise, it just makes me look good, which is quite difficult to do, <laughs> to be honest. But uh, anyway. We have an old fashioned tomato. One of my favourite pubs is the Edgar Wallace. Edgar Wallace was the bloke who wrote King Kong. I tell you, the guy was prolific. I mean, he wrote so many books, you could see them all inside on the shelf. We have no bananas. An excellent selection of ale they have in here. Thank you very much. Cheers. I've got a lovely bunch of coconuts. And there they are, standing in a row. Big one, small one, some as big as your red. Splendid. These lawyers, they really know how to look after themselves because from the river, you can walk through the uh, Temple Inn, the Inns of Court, and all the way up through Fleet Street and way beyond without really having to be in busy traffic or anything. It's a really lovely, serene place to come for a walk. Being a lawyer is a bit like being in Harry Potter. When you become a lawyer, they, they assign you to a sort of house, a bit like the sorting hat. So you, you get put into either Gray's Inn, Lincoln's Inn, Temple Inn, or is it called Inner Temple or Middle Inner Temple? And uh, Temple Inn here is uh, named after the Knights Templar, who were originally a group of nobles who uh, formed this brotherhood in order to protect 
pilgrims visiting the Holy Land over in Jerusalem. Um, actually, they became very wealthy and they set their headquarters up here. Eventually, they became a little bit too wealthy after beating up everybody on the way and just nicking their money. So the Pope and the King of France got a bit fed up with it and disbanded them in the end. And they gave all their possessions and property to the rather less threatening Knights Hospitaller, I think, the Knights of St. John. And um, the Knights of St. John leased these grounds to the lawyers. It feels like you're in Oxford or something, or Cambridge, or something like that. And it's astonishing to think there's some people who start at private school as a boarder, then they go on to Oxford or Cambridge, and then they end up getting a job here in the Inns of Court. And uh, I think you can end up then becoming a judge and realistically never having really lived in the real world. I actually went in there and filmed a couple of years ago, so just in case you haven't seen those videos, because you may not have watched all my videos, uh, here they are now, and here's me looking a little bit younger. <laughs> This part's called Fountain Court, obviously because of the fountain, but it might be because it's named after Edward de la Fontaine, who used to own a house here. Every emblem you see in the middle temple side has got one of them, and every uh, other chamber has got the horse. So that's how you know which side you're on. One bit you really must see is Middle Temple Hall. So that's pretty much exactly how it was back before the Fire of London. In 1602, Shakespeare and his jolly brethren performed Twelfth Night here for the first time. Really? Yeah, he was in the cast himself. Shakespeare's been inside there and he's seen it exactly as it is today. It's lovely in here. They do functions and all sorts of things here. 16th century it was. 16th yes. century. Wow. It hasn't changed. Who gets to eat in here? All our judges and our barristers and the students and private functions in the evening and in house in the evening. I know where I'm coming for my birthday. <laughs> Thanks very much. My dad used to have his offices down here and he took me to the temple church here. He used to say that it was where the Knights of the Round Table used to gather. This is where Tom Hanks comes with Audrey Tortue in the film The Da Vinci Code. This round, as we call it, was first consecrated in 1185 by Heraclius, who was like the Bishop of Jerusalem for the famous Order of the Knights Templar. These effigies of knights, they look really creepy on the floor, don't they? They're excellent. And they're not graves, by the way, they're effigies. There could be well over a hundred Templars buried underneath the church, uh, probably quite far down. They're quite often cross-legged because it's supposed to make it look as though they're walking towards you. Who told you that? I read it. You know how to read? <laughs> Died 1219. The Knights Templar were very powerful people and the master of the temple here used to sit in Parliament as the first Baron of the realm. And actually, the head clergyman here has a very unique title. The Reverend and Valiant Master of the Temple, yes. It's rather wonderful, I think. In here somewhere is uh, William Marshall, one of the most famous knights of his age, because he unhorsed Richard the Lionheart. There was a jousting field just behind the Royal Courts of Justice uh, that belonged to the Templars. They basically knocked him off his horse and he went, ah, I could have had you. These knights were involved in meetings here with King John. It would have been today probably called uh, mediation between the King and the Barons. Sir William Marshall swore on behalf of King John that the Barons' grievances would be dealt with, which ultimately led to the signing of the Magna Carta, which is our first Bill of Rights, 1215. Signed to Honeymead, we should go there one day. Runnymead. Hmm. Where is it? On the way to Surrey. We're on the A30. The A30 from Waterloo? The A30. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I thought you were talking about a train. <laughs> now, just down Star Yard is Eden Ravenscroft. This is the oldest tailor in London. I think it's actually the second oldest shop in London. If you become a, a judge or a lawyer, then this is where you come. I mean, if you're a judge, it costs something like uh, 15,000 pounds to have the whole shebang. I think you get two robes, a judge's wig. Oh, now I'm confused. Now, the one on the right, I think, is a barrister's wig. And the one on the left is a judge's wig. And the big one with the big floppy ears, I think this is more of a kind of ceremonial wig. You get breeches, you get buckles, you get your gowns, and you also get the old black cap which they used to use for passing the death sentence, which is quite weird because we don't have the death sentence anymore. Do we still have it for treason? I think they even sort of treason in the Queen's dockyards. That used to exist until quite recently, but they got rid of that as well. But the funny thing is, if you're a barrister and you're in court, or if you're not wearing your wig, the judge will say, I can't see you. I cannot see you. I cannot hear you. He'll, he's basically, he actually says, oh, I cannot hear you. You can talk as loudly as you like to him. Let's go, I cannot hear you. 
blah, 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 blah. <laughs> it's quite funny. I'm rather childish, really. Inside, it really feels like you're getting your new school uniform, a bit like going to Hogwarts. Now, that is excellent. Look, that is a Victorian pissoir. I wish they had more of these, but this one's locked. It's good that they've put it into a dingy alleyway, though, because what they do up in Soho, they've got these port type urinals, and they plonk them there on Saturday nights. Um, because there's a lot of people out drinking. But they put them right in the middle of a really busy street and you have to stand there and just, like, <laughs> address the urinal, like looking over your shoulder at all these passers-by. It's really embarrassing. They should put them down discreet alleyways like this one. But um, I don't think it's been used since about the 1980s. Permanently locked now. It's always the same, isn't it? They really need to go and then nothing comes out. There is a serious dearth of public urinals in... in London, I must admit. Although my mother used to know all of them. She used to speak to all the lady lavatory attendants in London. But yeah, a pub will do. They're always filming around here. They're filmed in the new Mary Poppins film, um, with Emily Blunt is being filmed just down there in Temple Inn. And uh, opposite the back of the Royal Courts of Justice, and I've just spotted this here. These are parish boundary markers, and that's a WSD, probably West St Dunstan's, because over there is St Dunstan in the West Church. So that's that side would have been that parish. But I think the one that looks like a cross was actually originally an anchor, and it said SCD on it, which was St Clement Danes, which was the church just over there. I don't know why it's an anchor, though. Maybe because the, the Danes arrived as Vikings on ships, or I don't know, there was a lot of Dutch sailors around here, hence the, hence the Seven Stars pub. Don't ask me, but that's what that is. It just means this is the boundary line between the, the parishes. Um, as if you cared. All right, let's go. <laughs> this is the back of the Courts of Justice, and this street is called Carey Street. And they say, have you ever heard the expression to being in Queer Street? It's nothing to do with homosexuality. It's not, I'm not referring to Old Compton Street in uh, Soho. It's, being in Queer Street is a, quite an old term for being bankrupt. Quite a Dickensian thing to say. He was in Queer Street. And the reason is because this building here used to be the old bankruptcy court. Then you'd come out and you'd find yourself in Carey Street, which became corrupted to be Queer Street. Do you care? <laughs> I don't really. Yeah. Let's go to the pub. <laughs> no, the Seven Stars is, um, that's, this is supposedly, they claim to be the oldest pub in London. So it was built around 1610, I think, but uh, the building dates are a bit later than that. But uh, there has been a pub here since the 17th century. <laughs> it's really cute because they used to have a cat here that used to wear a ruff. Um, I don't know if he's still got it. Um, Seven Stars refers to the Dutch sailors, I think. This was quite predominantly Dutch area back in the 17th century, and a lot of the Dutch sailors would come and hang around here, and I think there were seven provinces in the Netherlands. Who knows or dares to dream? Fancy a pint? Oh, yeah. Let's head inside. Cheers, Ariel. Cheers, everybody. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy my films, don't forget to hit the subscribe button underneath the screen there and uh, hit the bell if you want to be updated about every time I upload a video. And uh, if you want a private guided walk around London, you can head over to my website, jewelsguides.com, where you can find out more about me and you can even donate some money towards the cause so that I can have more than a sliver of bread and stagnant water for my dinner and I can pay Ariel to come help me <laughs> if you want you can head over there and uh, be my patreon whatever that is up to you or you can even buy a tasteful piece of Jules Guides merchandise I did cheers, oh, cheers. what a beauty I've never seen one as big as that before hey oh